Hi everyone, Angelina Sparkling Diva back with another pick a card reading. And this time I only have two choices because I went quite deep with this and um, for some reason I just felt this is enough. If, so if you do not feel drawn to either set then this reading is likely not for you at this time, that is possible. Um, but just feel as usual, right? The reading is about what does your soul want you to know? And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna hit with this reading on quite some deep stuff. Uh, well, that's what I felt anyway. So, anyhow, uh, for the numbers one, let's see, uh, the beautiful gold, you can see. Well, this one has that as well, of course, but anyhow, uh, for the numbers one, this is Oregon Opal. And for the numbers two, I chose a Garnerite in Moonstone. The green is Garnerite and the grey is the Moonstone. So please just really feel, tune into the card or the crystal or choose the timestamp, whatever, just float your boat, right? Or how you choose. And I'm going to start the reading. I'm seeing you there. Right, numbers one. Um, first, we're going to look into what your soul wants you to know, and then we get some other things after that. Um, there's plenty more of cards to come, but this first one, the Seven of um, Pentacles, says that you have plenty of options, and even if all the doors are currently closed and it's and and there seems nowhere to go, right? However, the right door for you will open uh, with the right key, and that door that you then can open is your deepest desire, what you want most, and that will come um, because we have this as well, the two of cups. So that will come straight from your heart. And you cannot get the key to open that door from any other place. And it may mean you have to get back to believing that it can happen. Uh, that, uh, that it is there and that it is meant for you. Right? Maybe you've lost that a bit. That is possible. So if that's the case, then you might have to take some time to go back to that. So you go back to feeling and in your heart and what you really want and desire, right? And uh, and from that place, when you're in there, in back to your desire and what you really want to have or create or be, uh, from that place, you can make your wish uh, with the cups moving them over with the cups oops uh ah <laughs> can't pick it up uh cups nine you see the coin being thrown into the wishing well and uh that doing that may, uh, making your wish is also sending the message to the universe uh and and that message will then be enveloped in Pure faith and true inspiration and from the heart, right? Because you can't you can't do this from the head. That, that's not going to work. And uh, you can set intentions and, and, and all that stuff and think of stuff that you want and uh, would like in your life. But if your heart and your true inspiration and desire isn't behind that, it's, it's just not really going to work out. You, you, you will have to work really hard in order to then get it manifested um <clears throat> and if you then get into that space the heart space uh, the inspiration and make your wish then the right door for you will open maybe even more than one if that if you have that desire if you have several things that you would like right um meaning that when one door uh, opens to let's say health or success the door to love may also open or the other way around so in that sense when you're in the flow anything and everything is possible the good thing is that spirit will have your back and the doors uh, that you might have gone for in this situation in this scenario from the head or the ego they will remain closed so if, if you're in in this space 
right in that right place aligned centered from the heart spirit is also going to protect you and if this door for instance wouldn't be right for you it will not open um yeah and if that is to happen uh that you make a wish and things begin to move and the door will open but not the one that you actually were kicking against right don't take it as rejection see it as divine protection because then it just like i said it means that that uh, door what it leads to is just not right for you or not in this moment um cups two this card also indicates that heart-to-heart -heart connections so not only romantic connections just all connections um are meant for you and that you can have them for sure so if you do not have them now, um, these will come, but again, you must get into alignment in your heart space in order for you to have these uh, attract, these wonderful uh, nourishing connections into your life, whether that's friends or uh, a lover or whatever, or even improve the, uh, the connections and relationships that you have in that sense, right? Because often that's also, uh, well, what we would like. And, and then we move to the next card. And I'm removing these. We have the Seven of Swords. This is very interesting. Because, uh, well, if you've been following me, you will know that I do not always stick to the default, simplest, simplest uh, interpretation of a card. I just really go by intuition, what it tells me, for this particular reading. And in essence, the Seven of Swords is never really a very positive card. Normally you see this uh, man um, sneaking out of a place with Seven Swords. And, uh, well, this deck is different, of course, then, right? But uh, is a very strong and clear message to not get involved in things that are not within your control and to also steer clear from drama. And um, also don't get involved if it appears that it's actually at your expense. It, or, and then think, are you really actually losing important things here? Right? Because the, the foxes are running off with stuff from your campsite. So it, are these things that you're basically losing um, that are taken away from you, are these really important or is it just superficial stuff and in any case if you get involved you will lose much more you will then lose your alignment and for some reason um this is very important to this message to maintain uh your alignment right in order to stay on your soul path and to get what you came here for this life so, yeah, you, you, if it's not really, think about it, and if it's not really very important, even if it seems that way in the moment, because they're running off with all their stuff, <laughs> uh, don't get involved, because it will, it will throw you out of whack, and then with that, uh, off your path, right? And, um, because... Um, Let's see. Well, yes, I have, need another card, and I don't have that. Anyhow, that will come back then. Um, for you, it's more important than for others to do this and to stay in alignment, because it's, of course, important for everyone. But for you, it's more important even than for others. And that's uh, because of your soul path, what you came to learn and do here, this life. Um for you, this life, it is all about the Cups 9 card. And uh, we had that just the first time, this one. But it comes up uh, from another deck a few more times in your reading. And it means um, getting your wishes fulfilled. Learning how to do that. And how to get there. And actually also getting there, right? To get your wishes fulfilled. 
And so if you then have a tendency, and that there can often be a pattern, a, a rut in a way, if you don't have a tendency to get sucked into drama or to get involved into things that you cannot control, then try to remember this message. Do not go there, right? You are in this in this caravan, that mobile home, whatever you want to call it. So you have shelter. There's light, there's warmth, and it's cozy inside. You're safe. Unless you open that door and get involved in, in all the chaos and trouble outside. And you cannot stop this, stop this, as it's not within your power to do that. Nor is it truly of importance for you. So let it go. Let it slide. Don't get involved. And that, that doesn't mean to say it's always about stuff like what you, what you see here, your things being stolen. This can also mean uh, in, in the external, uh, just chaos and turbulence and a lot of conflict and all that kind of thing. Uh, and that can be globally, which is going on at the moment quite a lot, but it can also be within, for instance, your uh, social circle or your uh, romantic life or within your family or whatever. That, that at the moment is a lot of turbulence or regularly and chaos and conflict, etc., etc. Then don't get involved in that. It can also be that, right? Um, so... If it's not within your control, uh, don't get involved. Don't stick your nose into it. You stick in, uh, stay in alignment and on, on your path. Um, yeah. And, and when you think about that during the day or the week or if you look back in your life, often we get all upset and... And, and and wound up and anxious and all that stuff over stuff that we just really can't control. And all that does is get you out of alignment, get you stressed, uh, it throws you off. And, you know, it's, it's really better, very important for you to not do that, to stay, you know, stay away from that. Um, what you should focus on are your... True goals and your dreams, those things that are in your heart and, and that you have a passion for and inspiration and that make you feel happy and good. And we see that again here with the uh, three of wands, this card. And uh, this is visualizing these things, your dreams, your passions, what you want, what you want to be, where you want to go, just everything, whatever it is that you're goal and dream is in life and focus on these and set them out in the universe which is basically what she's doing here as well right with these uh, tiny little boat things <laughs> and uh, make it known to spirit that that is what you want and start then to feel as if it's already with you, as if, as if you already have it or are it, or, or you know. And that's working with law of attraction. And when doing that, focusing on that, the good, the positive, the dreams and what you want uh, will be heard. And it will also be granted. And if you are focused or involved in negative and drama and chaos and all the stuff that's going around in the world or in your life, then you send that out. Then that's the message that you send to spirit and then you will get more of that. Well, that's not, gonna, that's not what you want, right? And um, so make sure that you send out the right things by, by thinking about it, by feeling it, like what it would be like if you already were there and had it and set that send that out into the cosmos and then it, that will be heard and it will then be granted right because we have the eight of wands and it, it will go fast as well because the eight of wands is a very fast energy and you can see all, all these owls coming towards you so it's coming to you in plural right because there are a lot of owls so more 
then what you set out with the three of wands is coming back. If you keep your alignment and your heart pure. Right? It's really absolutely beautiful. Um, now we're going to move to another tarot deck for the next uh, part of the reading. Remove these cards. And then we see the hanged man. This is, um, oh yeah, what you are not seeing. And then we have the, uh, yeah, there's more tarot cards to come. I can't put them in, in one go, I don't think. Anyhow, the first three. Um, right. Many of you may feel, re who chose this set then, right? May feel restricted or stuck by something with the first card, the hangman. Um, and that can be that you feel you have lack, or maybe you do actually have that as well. Lack of money, uh, no relationship, it can be work related, health related, and so on and so forth. Uh, so it's different for everyone, right? It's not a personal reading. Um, but what you're not seeing is that you're not really stuck. The man in this, this picture it, it can free himself anytime he chooses. So are you really stuck or are you choosing to remain stuck? And um, furthermore, <laughs> even within this situation, you have the room to move. The chains aren't even really tight. So you could, for instance, swing back and forth or left and right. right? So um, in a way, you are so well off that the riches is falling out of your pocket. See the coins here, gold coins. And abundance is around you, whatever form it takes for you. Right? That's not always monetary. It can be with love and friends and a lot of support and uh, great health or whatever. It, it, it's not just money, right? The abundancing. Um, so, so you're not as stuck as you think or feel or believe that you are. And maybe you cannot get out of this situation. That is possible for some, maybe, depending on what and how. But you can still, within the, uh, the, the, the confines of that situation, you can still move. You can still do things. You can move back, forth, left, right, even diagonally. You can uh, go up, right? And, uh, there's plenty of stuff you, you can do. And, um, and that's what you're not seeing, because that's what we're looking into now. And then we have the emperor. You can take control of your life. You are not a victim. Even if it is within the confines of what is holding you back, you can still take control and feel and be empowered and in control. Right? So even if you really are confined, restricted for whatever reason, you can still take control and feel empowered you really can and um, I also feel as if the world is burning under that bridge which is not what is depicted these are actually like castles or something buildings so that there is no fire but for some reason it felt like that as if the world is burning on the, under that bridge but the emperor is high above it right so he's safe and sound. So even if the whole world or your environment is in chaos, which we saw earlier as well with the uh, foxes that were nicking stuff. Um, so even if everything is in chaos, you are still safe and can also keep a clear head because this, this is masculine energy. It's, it's, it, it can stay really focused and really clear and decisive and in control and take action if need be and so on and so forth. Uh, yeah, and that is a tremendous power and ability to have. And you have that 
but you might not see it. You might not be aware of it, but you do have that. You have that inner strength. And um, the same thing I feel from the hanged man, in a way, that if there are is too much trouble, too much whatever that isn't good in your life going on that you don't like, you just remove yourself from the situation. Like he's above it all, right? Because that bridge is floating and he's standing there. And here, he's, he's above the world, above the earth. So you can and possibly also do that, maybe subconsciously, remove yourself from a situation. Even if it means hanging upside down, figuratively then, right? And not only does that remove you from the turbulence and the chaos, possibly conflict, whatever, but it also gives you a very, very big perspective of what's actually going on. And when it's safe to return back to, you know, Earth. So again, that's an absolutely great asset. And maybe you have gone through many hardships and trials and tribulations, but... You, you you did come through it because you are strong and have the ability to not get touched at a core level. It's like what we saw with the Sword 7. Hang about, I'll get that cards here. Um, you may lose some stuff when there is uh, turbulence and, and conflict and whatever going on. You may lose some stuff, but in essence, you are not touched. Your core remains untouched and strong. Um, and it, that means you also have the power and strength to do what it is that you want, if you choose to do so. That, that would mean that you'd have to decide to undo the chains here and come down to join the rest of the world. So I feel for an, at least a number of you, maybe not for everyone, but for a number of you, this is a choice to stay in this situation or not. Yeah, because you might also think like, if you do, if, if, if that resonates with you, right, and you do that, you withdraw from stuff and uh, so you don't have to deal with it, you don't have to take responsibility, no accountability, and so on and so forth, and also without knotting your power that you actually do have, uh, that might result, and you see that here as well as, oh, not enough space, as here, that may actually cause you to lose things, right? Which is going on here and here as well, because he's losing these coins. So that's another side to that. So in some situations, you would then have to not get involved, withdraw, like the hanged man. But in other situations, you have to think about it. Am I actually doing that? as a survival strategy that I don't need anymore just because I, I'm afraid to go out there to, to stand my ground, to stand tall, etc, etc. But if that's the case, that's ego fear, right? Then you are losing stuff that you shouldn't be losing. Then it's really truly at your expense. So you have to make that, that, that discernment between these two things. Between sometimes you better stay indoors because this is not all that important and you're safe and nothing really, you know, you, it, you won't lose your alignment. Or are you doing this, staying in there out of fear because you then go out, which is ego fear. You have to make that discernment. Huh. Yeah, funny. Uh, yeah, funny in the sense that I didn't have that come up earlier. That comes through now. So uh, and that may not be this, this double message, so to speak. It may not be for everyone, but if it resonates with you, then, well, then certainly it is for you. <laughs> um, let's see. Then we move to the Cups 6, the last card that we have on here now. Um Beautiful card, always a beautiful card. Uh, 
so this is still about what you're not seeing, right? You have a very healthy sense of self-love and emotional strength. And you've always had this, even if your childhood or your adult life or whatever was very tough and hard on you. And it might pay off to look at the good things that also happened. If, if you had maybe like me, for instance, I was bullied at school, at elementary school for years on end. But, and, and then it's so easy, we always do that <laughs> with everything. It's so easy to look at the negative and the bad and, uh, you know, but there's also always good stuff, positive stuff, what you learn from it, what it actually brought you, even though it wasn't very pleasant. So that's important to do as well. Look at the good things. Learn, train yourself to look at the positive and the good things, not just the negative. Oftentimes, we, we keep uh, telling the story of the old and the negative way too often and way too long. So, um, yeah, and, and, and you may find that that might be difficult because we have a stronger memory of the bad things, negative things, than of the happy, positive stuff. But that's also very important to look at that, right? If you had a difficult childhood or um, just life in general, just learn to look at the good and at the positive. Um, and I also feel this, this inner core strength here with that card very strongly. And, and that, that comes from... Uh, previous lives and that again doesn't mean that you had happy past lives or only happy past lives because I do think we all have happy past lives as well but whatever happened it did bring you this enormous strength and resilience that can be of benefit now and maybe for the first time, for the first life, in that sense. As I do think it took a lot of uh, cultivation to get there, right? And uh, let me remove that card, because this is that enormous strength, decisiveness, action, masculine, that power, the focus, and uh, tremendous strength. And... Um, let's see, I'm going to stick the last two in for this question uh, we have the seven of wands and again that's the second time the nine of cups first time was the wishing well with the coin right and uh, here we have it again the second time so uh, but the first the seven of wands uh, again here we see the power uh, to stand up even when facing resistance. And that can also actually be inner resistance. It doesn't have to be external from people, situations, etc. It can also be your own uh, inner resistance, yeah, from the ego usually then, right? Fear or whatever that keeps you from doing things. But you can do it, what you want, what you really desire, right? You can do it if you choose to go for it. And spirit has your back and always is what I hear. That's what spirit is saying. Because of the light behind you. So spirit is always with you, always has your back. <clears throat> and you may not see that and any of these things, but it, this is, yeah. And uh, it, this, this won't be much of a fight. As I kind of see you walking into a greener pasture, one that does nourish you and support you and resonate with you. And, um, you know, that's, that's also something, right? There's not this, there's still about this card. There's not always a need to battle with what's not your homestead in life. And maybe that's a lesson to learn. And what I mean is that sometimes uh, people tend to uh, hold on to battle for 
for instance, holding on to a job, a relationship, uh, uh, thought patterns, a food pattern, uh, addictions like smoking, or what, it can be anything, right? Um, and then you struggle with that and you battle with it, even though it's not nourishing for you and it doesn't support you. And then again, you need to use the discernment that do I actually need to battle here? Do I need to go to to the battle, or is it? Should I just turn around and walk away? So pick your battles carefully. Think about that one. Because not every battle is worthwhile. Only fight for what is worthwhile. And the funny thing is, um, that similar thing came up in another another reading not that long ago. Uh, with the Morrigan, Mor Morrigan, the Morrigan call in that deck, the, uh, there was a similar message, actually the same message, to pick your battles carefully. Maybe you remember that, if you've seen that, and pick that set, right? And then, then if that's the case, then the message, this message from this card is extra strong for you. Um, all in all, with the, the, the cups, the nine of cups, you can have your nine of cups and your wishes fulfilled this life. And that's what your life is about this time. To, uh, I said that earlier as well, right? To, to, to get that and also to know and learn how to get it. And then to actually take the action steps to, so you get it, that you get that, right? And apparently you, because it comes up in with the question of what are you not seeing, you likely are not seeing that you actually can have it all. You can have your wishes fulfilled, right? Because, yeah, there it is. So, um, moving on to the last two cards. Right, your last two cards. Um, basically, this is to sum up the reading a little bit. Um, what is it all about? Well, actually, we already knew that, know that, because I came up uh, with the Nine of Cups, which comes up here for the third time now. So this is really, really important for you, the message that you can have it all. All right, you can have your wishes fulfilled, you can have everything you want. And uh, even if right now you're thinking like, yeah, right, yeah, uh, you can tell me more like that. I'm not believing it. You, that's a, That may be the problem if that's the case, right? You're not believing it. But you can. Even if you are in a way restricted, limited for whatever reason, with even within that space, you can still have everything. You can still have it all. And maybe, especially with the chariot as well, um, you are looking in the wrong direction, uh, right? Like, like, uh, yeah. What, what is an example? Like, it, when you're driving a car, I come up with that again in a minute. But okay, when you're driving a car and you're not paying attention, not looking at the road, but looking at the uh, to get to a festival, for instance. It's just a stupid example. Uh, you're looking at the side window. Well, the chances of you getting at that festival are slim, right? So maybe you're trying to get what it is you want and desire uh, in the wrong direction or in the wrong place or the wrong way, or right? That might be a thing to think about as well. And um, anyhow, the chariot, it's what is it all about for you this lifetime, this time, finding your, your track, your dream, your inspiration, and then staying on track. And that means that once you've found it, you have to stay connected to it emotionally, from the heart, with your alignment, keep in tune with it and really feel it and live it and be it when possible. And, uh, and, and, and that's not in, in the way like, uh, for instance, you, you want to be really rich, right? That's a bad example, actually, but okay. <laughs> because usually that's from the ego, but let's take it as an example. And you're not rich yet. And then it's not like you're going to be rich and spend all your money. And then end up flat broke in debt and all that stuff. That's not what it is about. It's about feeling 
as if you're already rich, feeling the way you would when you are rich. And then you move differently, you talk differently, you walk differently, you feel differently. That's what I mean, right? And uh, so that's what you should do with whatever it is that you dream of having. Just how would you feel, behave, what would you say, what would you talk about, what would you read, what would you do, how would you walk when you already had that. And that's how you should live right now. That's how you attract it in. And if you lose touch with that, then you might derail because the chariot it will go quite fast. And again, with the car example, it's like driving 200 kilometers per hour in a sports car and not paying attention. That's not really a smart thing to do. So you have to stay focused on it. You have to stay connected to it from the heart, not from the head, from the heart, intuition and so on. Um, and you will do best and feel best as well when you're in touch with these higher goals and dreams. And your life will flourish more when you are as well. Which is logical, because if you start to tune into it and you start to feel as if it's there already and, and behave and walk and all that stuff, you start to feel great. So then your life will go best if you do that. And, and that's the, 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 the easiest way to get there, right? And if you uh, don't know yet exactly your dreams are, right? And that, that's very possible that you, you don't know, like, well, I haven't a clue. Just still tune in to your heart space, your intuition, and think of what makes you happy, what makes you feel good. Start doing that. And keep doing that, right? And then uh, from there, it will become clear by itself from taking action steps from uh, uh, the heart. Things that make you happy, make you f feel joyful. Maybe start playing music that makes you want to dance and move and sing and, and be joyful and happy, right? And it's also important that you're not too much in a rush because that can also derail you. And uh, then you get too focused on the end result and then you're not enjoying it anymore, which is very important as well. Because often during the journey, you see things, you meet people, you learn stuff and, you know, and it makes you feel good too. It's also important. So don't rush. Don't be too fixated on the end result. It's more important that you live and feel in the now as if that lover is already there, as if that money is there, their health, the success, whatever. And uh, in, the, in the end, you will get to the Cups 9 where you can have all your wishes fulfilled, but you're also in control, meaning there's a balance, in a way, between the uh, masculine and feminine, which is the emperor, again, that we had earlier with the bridge, right? That's the masculine. Um, the, the control is because you, uh, that's so funny because I feel that sometimes with this card she has her hands up and there is this light beam going through these cups and it's like being on your phone where you can swipe right like <laughs> left or right and, and then you can choose or in games you sometimes see that as well where you can pick items for your character in the game and um, so she is in control she can say like okay today I want that cup and then she can swipe until that one is on top and then click enter and <laughs> uh, yeah okay that's very the computer talk but never mind but she can also think like and uh, not this this doesn't feel good today I want that one and then she swipes more and you know so there is control as well Control of uh, what you want, uh, what feels good with you, what resonates with you in the moment, right? It can be uh, for five minutes, can be for five weeks, it can be anything. Just what you need. So in that sense, the, the, for you, the sky is the limit. You wish it, you can have it. When you get here, when you walk through all what we discussed for your reading. And, and this is what your life is all about this time to experience that to work towards that and to enjoy it so this is what i have for you 
I hope you liked it, enjoyed it. If so, please like and subscribe if you haven't done that yet. <laughs> and that will help my channel to come up more in YouTube. So it will help my channel grow in that sense. And thank you for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye de bye. I'm just wanting to show my little kitten Neela. Oh, she's not so little anymore. She's seven and a half months now. <laughs> hey, she's so cute. And happy. I then decided to go to have a snooze while instead of uh, hassling me when I'm doing the reading. <laughs> and she's going to get fixed next week on Tuesday. I'm really nervous about that. But then at least after that she can go outdoors to play. And she really needs that. It's getting a bit too small indoors. Anyhow, the reading. Right, numbers two, your first cards. Plenty more to come. Um, we have the Magician, and it comes up again later on in the reading, so this is important. And we have the Two of Pentacles and the Eight of Pentacles. Yeah, Pentacles. Um, with the Magician, we're going to start there. You have an awful lot of potential, and I, this is your soul message, right, by the way. Um, you have a lot of potential, and I feel that you are beginning to realize that yourself. And maybe at times you are or have been surprised about um, what you can do as it is, is, or if you've already been through that discovery, then was more than you expected that you could do. And you can do things with that, of course, right? Like from uh, manifesting uh, tangible things, if that's what you want. Um, but yeah, you can do that then from a, a more confident, stable version of yourself. You can manifest that as well, right? A more stable, confident, self-confident, uh, aligned version of you. And, uh, there is still some doubt here with the pentacles too, but there is a way to overcome that with the bridge, right? And you know that way, the way to overcome that, over doubt or maybe fears. or And you have created this partly yourself, that bridge, but it was also built by other people, or will be if it's, it hasn't happened yet, uh, or external situations, which means that you have a support system around you. And that can help you to learn and feel that you do not have to do everything on your own. Let that sink in. Maybe you have the tendency that, to do that. That you, you don't ask for help. You don't accept help. Because you feel you have to do it by yourself. And you can do it yourself. But you don't have to at all. You can let your support system help you too. Right? And... Um, once you full, can fully embrace that and feel that, that you that there is this way to overcome the doubt and possibly fear and uh, that there is a support system, then um, you can come to trusting and believing. And you can then shift into the next step, the uh, Pentacles 8, uh, what you want, uh, what you want to do. And developing that more fully and further. That's what the woman is doing here as well. Just taking her time for it, enjoying it and testing it. And will this work? Will that way work? Is this better? Is that better? Right. So just taking the time to develop it, basically. And again, that can be about anything. For some, it might be personal development. Uh, for others, it, might, uh, it, it could be more about becoming successful in life or a shift in how you think and feel. And it, it, it can be anything, right? Because it's not a personal reading. So you have to just feel for yourself what it's about. Um, whatever it is, you will enjoy taking your time to create it. And if need be, to fine-tune it, what, what she is doing there. And also finding your your way with it, right? How it feels right to you. Because it might be that if this is a, a light, a lamp, 
uh, well, other people make limes as well, right? You can buy them everywhere, but you make yours, your way, unique, different, unusual. And um, there's the same with, with uh, let's say, coaching. There are tons of coaches out there these days. And if maybe you want to become a coach and then you think, oh, there's so many already. How can I start a business and become successful and earn a living in that? But you have to remember, no one does it the same way. You add your own thing to it, whatever it is that you want to do. Right? It doesn't have to be coaching. Can be, it, it's with everything. Um, you add your own thing into the mix. And that's what makes it special, makes it unique and a attracts then people to it. That you need, the, which again can be clients, customers, uh, or a support system, a lover, whatever, right? Um, yeah, so it's also about finding your way, how you want it, how you want, yeah, how it feels right to you. And then we go to the uh, Queen of Swords. I might as well stick the next card into. And um, I'll move that over to get rid of the glare. Right. So we have the Queen of Swords. And over oh, here. Yeah. And I get a feeling that you don't believe in yourself or your and your skills and talents. And also that you do not see or feel the support system, that you are supported. You feel alone here and abandoned. And because of that, your energy seems to have gotten smaller. Right? Because this, these, these, these roses with these thorns or whatever they are, I think they're roses, <laughs> they're quite close around her. So it's, it's you, you make your energy system your energy feels smaller and uh like your aura isn't really shiny and beautiful and spacious anymore while actually our aura should be quite well an arm length at the very least around us not closer otherwise it's like you can't breathe you can't move and maybe you feel that way sometimes as well as if you have no space to move and if if that is the case, if that resonates with you, then it is because your aura is too close to your body. And you drew that in as a means to protect yourself, uh, a survival strategy. And like with most survival strategies, and maybe you needed that in the past. And I feel both childhood and relationships in this with this. For instance, maybe you had an abusive partner. Uh, but that doesn't go for everyone, of course, right? But um, you have to think about this. Is this strategy really still necessary? Is oftentimes uh, we keep them intact. They have become programs that, that run in the background in our subconscious. And nine out of ten times, they are not needed anymore, but we still live them. Right? So, and if that's the case for you, then it limits you. It may affect your social life, but also your health. Breath, I hear now, for some, that will be at least. You cannot breathe in this narrow, tight aura. Yeah. And uh, your soul wants you to know that you do have a lot to offer, that you are a beautiful person and that you do have the right to shine and be happy and joyful. That's your birthright. And all your connections can shift into a warmer shape or you can attract new warmer connections. Right? If the ones that you're in, uh, that you have right now can't shift with you, then you can simply attract new ones. And when you uh, and that can happen when you move into believing in yourself and acknowledging your potential and who you truly are. And you have that potential, right? The magician is amazing in that sense. And uh, and I, I really get this feeling that you don't really know who you truly are. 
and also with that not really acknowledge your potential you can't if you don't really know who you are and with the pentacles nine the next card it would help and benefit you to start creating new routines in your life. Ways that make you feel good and lighter. Begin to learn how you can take proper care of yourself. And do that from being soft and gentle with yourself. So not demanding results and being harsh because it's not working out, right? You have to treat yourself with a lot of love and self-care. And also feel from your heart what it is that you need. So don't punish yourself, and that includes not punishing your body when it doesn't function the way you would like to, or when it, or when it doesn't look the way you would like to, right? Don't punish yourself. Love it. Hug it. Care for it with love. That's so important, and that can actually change your body as well if you have health issues or, uh, well, maybe like uh, uh, weight issues, right? And um, that also goes back to Pentacles 8, uh, here, where you are finding out what and how it is that serves you. And in that you see the woman, well, she's, she's enjoying herself. She's really focused, but she is enjoying it. And so is this woman, right? Yeah, and the sword six, that card, um, and the person is in the tree, and there's the wolves underneath there, right? I wouldn't go down either, by the way, but uh, this me the message in this reading for you is when you feel attacked, or notice that you start taking things personally, and then, and then feel attacked because of that, don't fall into the old routine of withdrawing and hiding, which is, in a way, what she's doing, right? Putting up walls and drawing uh, her energy in and uh, in a tight aura and etc. And don't don't do that, because as you can see, it, that causes you a lot of stress and anxiety, which will only make you automatically pull all your energy close around you, right? This to not be affected, but. When you do that, you actually are affected, and way more than you realize. So, um, th th doing that, this, the withdrawing and pulling your energy closer to protect yourself, that old pattern and s survival strategy, is not helping you to shift in a warmer, better, more confident version of yourself, which we actually see here. Right, and um, what you can do instead is not automatically assume pe what people will be thinking because you do not know. You have to become more like this card sticking out there. Oops, this this is the page of cups. Happy child dancing and you know, and having fun, enjoying herself, and. Um, you got to be more like her, light-hearted, playful, a sense of innocence and openness to discover as well. And um, so you have to basically let your inner child surface and play and just have adventures and fun. And small adventures is also good, right? They are also good. And they're still adventures. So if, if you're afraid of taking a huge leap, then don't. Take a small one. And uh, just be playful, have fun. That's what is very important. It's not about subconsciously demanding yourself to do X, Y, Z, right? That's, that's not playful. That's, that doesn't help you. Um, it's just thinking of something that could be fun and it could be very small. Again, like I said earlier, I think in the other set, uh, you, you for another reason, by the way, uh, you can put on music that you really like and move a little bit or sing along with it or both, you know, just have fun. And um, just remember that the Page of Cups is not about must-dos, but it's about I want to, I would love to, right? 
And this is a big process that comes up here. It's not something that you can shift in a week and not even in a few months. But you can make steps. And when you start doing that, when you start taking steps, you can already see change within that time frame, within a reasonably small amount of time. So don't forget to value the small steps and changes. And by all means, smile and giggle and laugh a lot. Watch maybe a comedy or something, something that makes you laugh. That really helps. And especially when something doesn't go the way you had wanted to, just laugh. Because that will automatically um, make it lighthearted. And... Um, when when you do that, when you you can when you can laugh about stuff or smile, when it goes wrong, it will also prevent you from stepping back in that old routine of withdrawing and pulling your energy fields close, right? Because then when you when you ha when you laugh about it, it becomes fun, and then there's no reason anymore to get, go up in that tree, and you know. So your next cards, we're going to stick those in. Right. Um, uh, next question is, what are you not seeing? In a way, we already had a few things, I feel that. But let's get into it. Uh, we have Judgment and then the Four of Pentacles and the Queen of Pentacles. And there's a few more cards that I'll stick in in a minute. Um, judgment is saying here for this reading... There are signs, synchronicities, messages, opportunities and help all around you. But you are not seeing them uh, or not accepting them or whatever. Um, it can be both or either, right? Um, because you have energetically tucked yourself away in your comfort zone. The confines of what you know and what is familiar. And that is not necessarily... Um, feeling good or good for you it all it means is that um it's it's familiar right and not yeah the familiar often holds us in situations that aren't even healthy for us at all it can be very toxic even but it's still familiar so yeah you stay there then regardless because you then move out and <clears throat> not very willing to leave Right? Because it's familiar to be here. Even though it might not be good for you, there might not be growth or whatever, or not enough love or health or anything uh, that is lacking. or eh? uh, But you keep yourself in that situation because it's familiar. And in that sense, <clears throat> comfortable. And with the Queen of Pentacles, it's really weird. I never had that before, but that happens with every reading. It makes me feel that you are trying to convince yourself that this, this is it. This is wonderful, right? I have it good. There's nothing wrong because she's beautifully dressed. And um, it is all luxurious and beautiful and colorful and all this stuff, but... Um, it's, it's, I really get a feeling that you're trying to convince yourself like this is it, this is wonderful, this is good I have it all and nothing's wrong but that's an illusion as this is not even close to what you can have and not close to what truly is good to you because you have to remember we, you're still I'm trying to get the card you're still this so yeah, right? It's a completely different uh, image. So you're basically in this situation and trying to convince yourself it's this. So it's an illusion. It's, it's yeah. And um, you keep yourself small with that and confined, again, because you see here, you see this, this uh, banister thing and your column and the curtains, so she's not out in the open and free. So it's still confined, still in your comfort zone. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I keep getting the feeling that for most who chose this set, this comfort zone is not one that feels good to you if you're really honest. That you're, So, in that sense, that you actually 
no. It's just like you don't want to know, you don't want to see that. Because, well, maybe you're just afraid that you can't do it or that you can't have it or whatever, right? There can be plenty of reasons for that. Um, let's stick the last two cards in for this question, what you're not seeing, because that's what we're still talking about. We have the Pentacles 3, the Swords 9, and the Wheel of Fortune. But the Pentacles 3 is saying you have to be more active, more hands-on. I actually felt, <laughs> when I saw that card, like, you have to get your hands dirty, right? Not like this Queen, yeah, prim and proper beautifully polished fingernails maybe and figure figuratively right i'm not talking literally and uh, this queen she's not getting her hands dirty she's got servants and, and and people to take care of her she's not doing anything much and uh, figuratively all right i'm not saying you live with servants or anything or uh, in i'm not that's not what i mean but you have to be more active do more hands on do do the thing that makes your heart sing you look at this man i, I hope you can see that he looks really chuffed with himself with what he has made what he has created these pentacles and they, and that can be hard work because he's in a he's a blacksmith also i suppose and that can be very hard work and uh but if you like it if your heart is in it if it makes you happy it's not hard work at all then it doesn't feel half as exhausting as the situation that you keep yourself in now Right? And um, it will make you happy. It will give you energy because it's so rewarding. And yet you seem to fear taking that step of doing that with the nine <clears throat> of swords. That is a stress card, anxiety, sleepless nights, not sleeping well. And, we, and again, we, you see this confinement here, right? Um, but... With the Nine of Swords, you do not have anything to fear. Not really. This is mostly your own limiting thoughts and beliefs that are holding you in place. and uh, Or even in a situation that doesn't serve you. Yeah, I, I, I can't help it. I, I keep getting relationships with this. The, a, a relationship that doesn't nourish you. And it doesn't have to be uh, an abusive relationship. Uh, a relationship can actually be, in a way, good, no no abuse or anything. But it, if it doesn't nourish you, inspire you, support you, then it's still not a good relationship. Even though the other partner, the partner might be a great person, right? He can be a good person, he can be wonderful, love you to death. And, uh, but that doesn't mean to say... He actually brings you, gives you what you need and, and can have and deserve. So it's not necessarily always a an abusive situation in that sense. And it doesn't have to be about relationship, but I keep I feel it very strong. So maybe for a number of you it is a relationship pattern or an actual current relationship. Um and if you're not in a relationship, then obviously it's not about that. Then it's about something else, right? Uh, right. The the next card, the Wheel of Fortune. The wheel is always turning. So it's not that you uh, can miss your ship or already have your ship sailed and miss the opportunity, right? Do not believe that. And... Um, I also feel I have to tell you... <clears throat> that you shouldn't believe anyone that tells you that your ship has sailed either. This is not true. And whether that's a friend, a partner, a parent, a colleague, it doesn't matter. Uh, if there is someone who has told you that, made you believe that, that your ship has sailed, you can't have it anymore, it's too late, you're too old, too, too whatever, <laughs> or not enough of this, that and the other, right? It is never too late. Uh, it's never too late to do, be, have, or become what you desire. And uh, the, the example that came up for me, um, 
when I was doing the reading is that uh, years ago I was watching a documentary about uh, emergency rooms, the ER in uh, America. And there, once there was this doctor and he was in his 50s and he had always been... Uh, he'd always been doing something else I can't recall exactly what but it was something like say like flipping burgers or you know something completely different something uh, with a low education low pay etc etc and uh, when he was uh, well I, I suppose in his 40s he decided he felt that desire that passion to become a doctor and he started to study to become a doctor. And in his 50s, he actually was a doctor and a bloody good one. And he was working on the ER and uh, running it, I believe, even. And, I mean, everything is possible. You're not too old to start something new. You're not too anything or not enough for to do this or... Anything is possible. The wheel is always turning. There's always opportunities. And if you didn't take an opportunity like uh, last year or five years ago, well, it will come along again, right? There's always another chance and another and another. All it takes is for you to jump and to trust and to believe both in yourself and in the universe that it has got your back, right? And... I feel it's really imperative that you feel, trust, sense, know, believe that you can do it. And, and, and if applicable, that you can still do it and have it. It's not too late. Right? And if that message doesn't resonate with you, uh, it can also mean that there is no rush. Because there's always another opportunity. Right? And uh, it and it is okay to be well prepared first, basically the Pentacle three and also the eight where she was fine tuning it and learning how to do it etc. And and do that first before you jump on the wheel to to to, to catch that opportunity, right? So if the first message didn't resonate with the wheel, then it, it's that. Yeah, sorry about that. I hope you don't find that confusing, actually. But that, that happens because it's not a personal reading. It's uh, more people, right? And then more things can come up. And you, you should really use, see, start seeing them, noticing them, uh, and use them, the signs and messages, the synchronicities, etc., that came up with the, the, the judgment card to know... When that timing is right to go from pre preparing to jumping on that wheel to grab your opportunity, right? Tune in. So your last two cards, right? This uh, your last two cards are basically uh, wrapping it up, summing it up. Uh, what is it all about for you this lifetime? And I feel for some, it's for not your entire lifetime, but a bit of a shorter cycle with, within this life. But, uh, yeah. Uh, again, the magician, right? Then we started with the magician and we have him come up again. So this is really important. And the sun, uh, the magician. What is it all about for you? Uh, what your soul wants you to know. Let's stick to that. Uh, you embracing your power and your potential and all your talents and skills and validating them, acknowledging them, bringing them into the light, right, with the sun and stepping into the light yourself as well, out in the open, no longer confined, out in the open where you can be seen and can live and expand, have fun, share with others. And I hear now, be part of something bigger. It's all about you stepping into who you really are. And with that, embracing your potential. No more hiding, making yourself small, or living in fear, or stress and anxiety, and not believing in yourself. It's, it's all about the opposite. Being seen, being validated, loved part of something right no longer alone 
all these wonderful, beautiful things. That's what it is about for you. And that starts with you first acknowledging your yourself. And all you have to offer, all that is you. Your talents and skills and so on and so forth. So this is the reading. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it's helpful. Thank you for watching and I will see you again next time. Bye.